Okay, in module 10C, we're going to start looking at formal charge. Formal charge is what helps me determine when these double bonds are happening and how the molecules actually are oriented overall. Formal charge. Okay, the sum of the formal charges must equal the overall charge of the molecule. Formal charge of an atom is defined as the number of valence electrons on the atom minus the number of electrons assigned to the atom. The number assigned corresponds to all the unshared electrons plus one half of the shared electrons. The shortcut, take your formal charge. To find formal charge, you take the number of valence electrons, subtract the number of lone electrons, and subtract the number of shared electrons. Or number of valence electrons minus every dot minus every line times two. Don't forget to add electrons for all the negative, elect um, negative charges and subtract for all the positive charges we have. For example, let's work NO3 minus to actually see what the heck this means. So NO3 minus, I have one nitrogen, which has five valence electrons. I have three oxygen, three times six valence electrons. Overall, that gives me 23 valence electrons, but I have a negative one charge. So I'm going to add one valence electron, giving me 24 valence electrons. Nitrogen is going to be my central atom. It's listed first, and it's less electronegative. Connect my oxygens. One, two, three. Now, go ahead and complete my octet on my outer atoms. I've used up six electrons so far. Eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, and twenty-four. Check my central atom. Does my central atom have an octet? No. My central atom does not have an octet yet, so I'm going to form a, a double bond. Basically, I'm going to donate two of the electrons that are on one of the oxygens and donate it to form a double bond with the nitrogen. This gives all of my atoms their octet. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Everyone has their octets. But now I want to look at formal charge. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Here, what I want you to do is think about, the way I think about this is, the rules here confuse me. So the way I think about this is I take how many bonds does nitrogen have? One, two, three, and four. I subtract four. That gives me plus one. The formal charge in the nitrogen here is plus one. So the number of valence electrons minus one for every bond gives me plus one. Oxygen, six valence electrons. Let's look at... Um, We'll call this oxygen one, oxygen two, and oxygen three. Let's look at oxygen one. Six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. All the lone electrons. They're just on oxygen, so they don't have to share it. And one bond. The one bond, we I know it says every line times two, but that doesn't the math doesn't work out for me that way, so I don't see it that way. Just do every line. Okay. Don't do the times two there. Um, if you do every line, you'll get the right answer. But so the six on there, those six lone electrons are just concentrated on the oxygen. So I subtract those because they're just an oxygen. For the bond, that bond holds two electrons, but it's being shared between two different atoms. So I'm looking at half of that bond. Half that bond is one electron, so minus one. This gives me an overall minus one charge. This oxygen is minus one. This oxygen matches that and is also minus one. My third oxygen, six valence electrons, one, two, three, and four, and one, two. Has zero overall charge. In this molecule, the nitrogen has a plus one formal charge, Two of my oxygens have a negative one formal charge, and my one oxygen has a zero overall charge. 
adding these up, negative 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 0 gives me an overall negative 1 charge, which is correct because nitrate has an overall negative 1 charge. So again, the nitrogen plus 1. Two of my oxygens, minus 1. And one oxygen has a formal charge of 0. We will do more formal charges as we work more examples, so you guys will see it a little bit more. It would be helpful if you memorize when you have zero formal charge, though. If carbon has four bonds, it has zero formal charge. It's easier than writing it all out. So carbon, the reason is carbon has four valence electrons. So if it has four bonds, one, two, three, four, zero. Nitrogen with three bonds and one lone pair has a formal charge of zero. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, one, two, three, minus the two lone pairs, gives me zero. Oxygen, if it has two bonds and two lone pairs, this is what oxygen prefers. Oxygen wants either two bonds, doesn't care if they're double bonds or single bonds, wants two bonds and two lone pairs. One, two, sorry, there's six valence electrons. One, two, three, four. So if you see one of these cases, carbon with four bonds, nitrogen with three bonds, and a lone pair. Sorry, wrong buttons. Or oxygen, two bonds, and two lone pairs. They have zero formal charge. And if you can just memorize that, it will actually make your life easier. Because then when you see it, you don't have to calculate it. You can just look at it really fast and be like, yep, that's zero. Move on to the next one. work a couple more examples. NH4 plus. Nitrogen, five valence electrons. Four hydrogen, four times one valence electron. Overall nine valence electrons, but I have a plus one charge here, which means I'm going to subtract out one valence electron. Gives me overall eight valence electrons. Connect everything. Two, four, six, and eight. I've used up all my electrons. Now determine formal charge. Hydrogen has one valence electron minus each hydrogen has one bond. So minus one for one bond gives me an overall zero charge. Nitrogen, five valence electrons, has four bonds, overall plus one charge which equals my overall plus one charge here. Okay, CO, carbon, four valence electrons, oxygen, six valence electrons, Overall, 10 valence electrons. Carbon to oxygen. Two. Four. So one bond to connect them to. And then four, six, eight, and ten. Oxygen has an octet. Carbon does not. Carbon wants an octet. Um, carbon only has four electrons right now, but it really wants eight electrons. So to give carbon its eight electrons, it's got two right here. I'm going to take one of these lone pairs here, make a double bond with it. Now oxygen's got its octet, but carbon still does not have an octet. I'm going to do that one more time and form this. Now carbon has an octet and oxygen has an octet. Carbon, four valence electrons, minus my two lone pairs, minus my three bonds. Minus one charge. Oxygen, six valence electrons, two lone pairs, or, um, my two lone pair electrons, and three bonds. Overall, plus one charge. This is the correct structure, SCO. It's not happy about it. Oxygen doesn't like being positive, but it will do it. This is um, the correct structure, though. Carbon has its octet, oxygen has its octet, and my formal charge is 
equal out to an overall zero. In SEO, uh, SEOF2, selenium, six valence electrons, oxygen, six valence electrons, two fluorine, two times seven valence electrons, overall 26 valence electrons. What you're going to find is that halogens, um, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they can form more than one bond. Fluorine can form one bond only. It doesn't have the ability to form more than one bond. It needs its octet, but it has seven valence electrons. It's going to have three lone pairs and one bond always. It's only got two um, N equals two energy shells, so it can't fit more electrons in. It's not one of the exceptions. It's not third level or below, so it can only have one bond. So it's going to be connected like this. This also tells me Se to O and then F2. Um, it's partial intuitiveness just from working problems that you're going to figure out how to connect these things. So far, though, I've used up six electrons. Eight. Ten. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Twenty. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. And twenty-six. Technically, everyone has their octet. If I do the formal charge, though, my fluorines sorry, seven. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, six lone pair electrons, and one bond. These are both zero. My oxygen, six valence electrons. Currently has six lone pairs in one bond, so minus one charge. And my selenium, six valence electrons, two lone electrons, and three bonds, overall plus one. It's not happy like that. It, um, in this case, it didn't have a choice. Carbon and oxygen cannot form another bond. It's not possible. But in the case of SEF, SeOF2, it is possible to minimize that formal charge. It doesn't want to have a positive charge next to a negative charge if it can avoid it. And so it's not going to. What it's going to do instead is it's going to take one of these lone pairs and make a bond, a double bond here. When it does that, it gets rid of that charge here. Now, oxygen six valence electrons, four lone pairs, two bonds, overall zero charge. Selenium, six valence electrons, two lone pairs, four bonds, overall zero charge. So that's what I mean by minimizing formal charge. Um, it will minimize it when it's able to. In some cases, it's not able to. And how do you know when that's the case? Practice. Lots of practice.